Good afternoon. Brian Harris in the studio welcoming you to Country Magazine. It's another hot day, no change forecast. In today's program we'll be talking about some new approaches to land clearing, particularly in the low rainfall areas. With harvest almost out of the way, many farmers are now putting aside cash for new clearing programs. However, as recent research is showing, you may well be able to leave some of that money in the bank by making the bush work for you. But first, some music. That's better. Now, what can I do for you? Bill Green, Department of Environment, Mr. Rushforth. George. Uh, I've just come out to see you about that clearing proposal you sent into the Department of Agriculture. Oh, yeah? I've got a few photos here. Air photos. Thought you might have to take a look at them. So you've got a few problems. Oh, yeah, the young lad was going hell for leather and ran into a washout in the crop. <laughs> Bet the damn thing. <laughs> Bad luck. Oh. You can't win them all. We'll just about straighten it out. Oh, uh, my son Tony. Tony, this is Phil. Um... Phil Green. Glad to know you, Tony. Hi, Phil. Just talking over your new clearing plan. Now, uh, yeah, this is the area you intend to clear, right? Uh, looks different from the air. Yeah, that's it. We call it Old Jack Scrub. Been running sheep in there for years, which is pretty handy in a year like this. But now the young fella's home. We thought we'd increase our cropping program. It looks like a couple of sand dunes running through it, as well as native grassland. Oh, there's a range of country up there. But we reckon after a couple of years, it'll come up pretty well under crop and pasture. Yeah, those dunes could give you a few problems, though. Well, we decided to leave some windbreaks. And I sent a plan to the department. Did you get that? Yes, we did. Yeah, well, that was Tony's idea. I never had much luck with them myself. Oh. Well, here we are. So we put them on this overlay. Well, how do you think they'll go? Well, it's a good start, but uh, I think if we could have a look at the actual area, I might be able to make a few suggestions. I've got to finish this old brute tonight. Tony, you can show him on the way out of the sheep. I suppose you can close the gates, all right? No worries. We now realise that what we once thought was worthless scrub can actually be a valuable asset in dryland farming. The native vegetation of any area has evolved to suit the particular conditions of that area. So, when everything else has dried up and died from drought, it will still be there, almost unchanged. See how this plant's holding the sandy soil in place? Oh, in the past, a lot of blokes have run into trouble after clearing dunes. Better waste a lot of time and money trying to revegetate after they'd started to blow. Yeah, right. We used to come up here and muck around when we were kids. There's still a few mallee fowl around. There's one of their old nests here, but I guess you blokes know about that sort of thing. Do you reckon it might be an idea to leave some scrub around these too? I mean, they're pretty rare too, aren't they? But before you go ahead with your clearing, it mightn't be a bad idea to have a closer look at the whole area. There could be some other rare species in here. Ah, that'd be a pretty big job though, wouldn't it? We'll send up a couple of field officers. They do an inventory of the plants and the animals as well as the land types. Well, as long as it doesn't take too long, because Dad wants to get into it straight after harvest. Well, that should be all right. See, once we know what's here, we can make some suggestions as to how to make the bush that's left standing work as efficiently as possible. The scrubland supports a surprising number of plants and animals. And this is one of the reasons why it's so stable, but every time a species disappears, the whole system becomes less viable. When the native vegetation is cleared, a whole range of plants and animals is replaced by one or two imported species. These thrive in a good year, 
but fall away dramatically when seasons are bad. And when this happens, not only does the year's income take a dive, but long-term damage is done to the land as well. And I, parts of that crop are so thin it's hardly worth throwing the header over it. If we don't get some rain next year, it'll be a job on the road for you, my boy. Oh, well, Mum always said I'd end up a road scholar. Philly environmental bloke wants to study old jacks for rare plants. Bloody government. Look, when I was developing this block, we weren't mucked around with all this bureaucracy. Do they want the country to go or not? Well, he made a couple of good points. He wants to see what's in there before we move in and maybe suggest some changes to protect the most valuable bits. What did you say? Well, I said as long as I had it ready on time, I couldn't see much wrong with it. I don't know what they expect to find down there. Probably a bloody sacred site. Look, I've been through that bush a dozen times and the rarest thing I've ever seen down there has been an emu. How are those young weathers looking? Well, they're only just holding. We're going to have to get them onto that stubble pretty quick, I reckon. When light soils are exposed, erosion can quickly become a problem. And erosion means a long-term loss in production. This can be helped by leaving natural vegetation standing. Access to vegetation also improves animal performance. They eat and drink less if they have shade and shelter. But the whole idea only works if there's enough bush left for it to regenerate and maintain its stability. A letter from the Department of Environment. Hmm, that was quick. I wonder what little gems they've got for us. Have a nap, son. Your property proved to be most interesting. Three major vegetation communities occur within the area, namely the Sand Hill System, Mallee Scrub, and Natural Open Plain. We have listed 81 species of plants and shrubs and we would like to draw your attention to six rare species in the area. We would also like to point out that there are 31 species of mammals and reptiles likely to occur in the area and 114 species of birds. Of these, four species of reptiles and six species of birds are considered rare. Oh, I'll be blown. Perhaps we shouldn't knock any of it down. Know these were around here? The <laughs> pigby <big> possum. <laughs> Haven't seen them for a while. There used to be a lot of them on the edge of the scrub when we were cropping at night. Yeah, there's a few of them around, but their numbers are dwindling. So that's one of the rare species, eh? Oh, not really. But they're heading that way. You know, here's another one. See, they're pretty common around here, but they're only found in a few areas. I didn't know that. What do you call it? Hilaria decarens. Well, we'd better leave a bit of bush around that then. Look, you mind if I show you a few modifications? You might like to include them in your initial plan. I, I think they'll solve the problem. Hey, I'll, I'll show you. Right. Now these are your three areas of dunes, scrub and natural plain. Now you can keep some of each and join them up with corridors of scrub, see? What do you mean by corridor? Well, it's really just an extension of your windbreak idea. So they join up the separate blocks. So if you isolate a block of scrub, it loses its biological stability, and eventually it could die out. Yep. Once the stock gets into that bush, it goes to pieces. Mm. Well, see, if you join them up, the animals and birds can move from one area to the other. That way they bring in new genetic material from the outside, and uh, it's good for the plants as well. Sort of like bringing in stud rams. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, and they double as windbreaks. What about getting machinery through? Putting a track through won't hurt it. Now, uh, this is your neighbour's scrub block, is it? Yeah, that'd be old Bruno's place. You know if he's got any plans to clear it? <laughs> I shouldn't think so. He hasn't done any more than scratch himself for years. He's not into the expansion <laughs> game. Yeah. Well, I must admit, that's rather what we were hoping for. So, we've widened this corridor here, and we've run it right up to the edge of his scrub block. Mm. Well, what's the idea? You're going to join the whole lot up, then? That's right. An interlocking network over the whole countryside. 
Yeah, that way the natural vegetation's got a better chance of surviving in the long run. You know, it's really an investment for the future. Mm. Do you, uh, you think you could talk to him about it? All right, we'll give it a go. Three quarters of the scrubland has been cleared already, so we need to be careful with what's left. It's a valuable asset. With proper planning, farmers will be able to get the most out of the bush that remains. Now you're clear on what I want. Yes, yeah, sure be right. Well, take this and make sure. It's easier to leave it standing than try to get it to grow again. Gee, George, you changed your tune. Well, I reckon what with the young fella and the environmental bloke, no harm in giving it a go. All right. right, mate. You're the boss. So if you have some clearing planned in the budget for this year or next, perhaps it will pay to get some extra advice. Clearing land is a costly business, but mistakes made now may prove even costlier in the long run. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Now, some music to work by.